Hey, this is Kent Jones with Jones & Associates PC in Cleveland, Tennessee. We cover Hamilton County, Bradley County, McMinn County, Polk County, uh, Marion County, and occasionally we go outside those areas if need be. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today, generally, about workers' compensation. Uh, if you are a worker, an employee of an employer, and you suffer an injury at work, uh, then this law covers you instead of the general uh, law regarding negligence and torts, which covers things like car accidents and so forth, unless those car accidents are while you are employed. Um, when I started in 1999, workers' compensation was in the court system, which meant that traditionally you had a complaint, answer, interrogatories, other discovery, subpoenas, uh, depositions and ultimately you received a settlement or went to trial uh, in court and um, the Department of Labor had a little bit of play uh, in those days to the extent that you could uh, appeal to them for decisions regarding uh, medical care and they could issue orders that uh, the employer insurer would have to abide by. <clears throat> Later in the 2000s, uh, it changed more to a hybrid system. That meant that the first thing you did as a plaintiff's attorney for your client was file a request for assistance. Uh, essentially, uh, what happened was you had to go do what's called a benefit review conference, or BRC. A BRC is typically an informal uh, settlement process. Uh, both parties are present uh, at the table with representative of the Department of Labor. Uh, they try to settle the dispute and in a lot of cases it does work, uh, particularly those that are not contested and um, if a settlement is achieved then you, you go forward with that and it is approved and um, uh, you go on. Um, if you did not uh, settle at the BRC, then an impasse report would be uh, submitted by the Department of Labor and the plaintiff's attorney would have uh, an option to file an action in the court system. Um, once it went back into the court system, it kind of reverts back to the old ways where you do the complaint, answer, and so on as I described uh, before. Uh, all the way up uh, until settlement or trial. Uh, in either case, if you were um, not happy with the verdict, uh, there is a, uh, an option for appeal to the Tennessee Workers' Comp uh, Appeals Panel, um, and uh, it consists of one justice from the Supreme Court and two special judges who are picked and usually who do a lot of this work. Uh, that's your final avenue and um, their decision uh, will be final except that uh, there is an option still to present the matter if very contested to the entire Supreme Court for full court review. Uh, those don't happen that often. Um, out of all the appeals that I did, I think it happened once but it does happen sometimes if there are important issues of law particularly. Uh, today, uh, it's no longer the Department of Labor, it's the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. Uh, everything is handled internally. There is no right to go to the court system. And uh, the Bureau of Workers' Compensation has um, specialists with the Bureau that work on your claim, and they have judges, and you can um, uh, present your claim to the Department of Labor and get it resolved, um, or you can go through the judges and get a judgment on it. Um, but in 2018, what's important is that if you are a worker and you are injured uh, during the course and scope of your employment, you have 30 days to turn in that injury, okay? Um, by law, it should be in writing, however, uh, oral turn-ins have been accepted. Um, once you turn in your uh, injury, then the employer has an obligation to give you a panel of three physicians to choose from for treatment. Once you pick a physician from the panel, you treat with that physician. 
you're not to get any medical bills. The workers' comp carrier gets the medical bills and pays them. If you are not satisfied with the treatment of that physician, or ultimately the permanent impairment rating, as I'll discuss in a minute, then uh, what most people do is go pay a doctor to uh, treat them uh, or give them an opinion as to treatment uh, and uh, ultimately uh, a permanent impairment rating. Uh, at some point, all of this information, including the panel doctor's information and the second opinion information, are presented to the Bureau of Workers' Compensation and um, if it goes to the judge, a decision is made um, and um, as to, in most cases, uh, like I say, treatment or uh, permanent impairment. Um, if uh, your doctor gives you medical restrictions, what you need to do is go back to your employer and present your employer with those restrictions. Uh, there are a lot of employers that have what are called light duty jobs and they will place you on a job that is within your restrictions and give you the same rate of pay. If they don't give you the same rate of pay, it's less than you're entitled to temporary partial disability or a difference. Um, if they don't have a job at all that you can do with your restrictions and you're off from work, then you're entitled to temporary total disability, that's TTD. And what that is, we figure out over a 52 week period what your average weekly wage is, and you get 66 and two thirds percent of that until you're able to return to work. Uh, of course, at any time in the process, uh, medical issues can come up. Uh, the doctor may not want to treat you anymore, and that gets into second opinion considerations. Uh, maybe the insurance company or the third party administrator will not uh, allow you to treat anymore. And if you have an issue regarding medical care, there are forms that can be filled out by us and uh, presented to the Bureau of Workers' Compensation to let them take a look at your case. Uh, be careful if you're going on the internet and looking for these forms because, as I said earlier, the law has changed uh, rapidly over the years and um, there are forms that govern different time periods and you have to be sure you get the correct one. Once you get that in the system, then uh, decisions are made and uh, you move forward. Ultimately, what you're getting is a permanent impairment rating. Uh, by a doctor uh, that would be your authorized treating physician and again like I said earlier if you have a disagreement with that you can go to a second opinion doctor and have all this information presented. There are multipliers uh, by statute that are applied with the permanent impairment rating that decide the amount of monetary benefits that you get in settlement or if you go to trial, there are judges within the parameters of the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. Um, again, um, once you uh, receive those benefits, if you settle, um, that settlement will be final uh, after 30 days. Um, if you're not satisfied, you can try it before in the judges within the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. And as I recall, there still is an avenue where you can go before a Tennessee panel uh, to ultimately decide your dispute. So that's the basics of workers' compensation law. There are a lot more things that can be considered. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call us at Jones & Associates PC. Uh, I'm there, Bradley Wilson is there as of counsel. <clears throat> Both of us are at 140 North O'Coy Street in Cleveland, Tennessee, uh, 37311. We're right across from the Bradley County Courthouse. Brad's suite is 220 Mines 290. Uh, my phone number is 423-424-6208. My email is joneslaw08 at gmail.com. Brad's number is 423-458-2479. His email is brad at bradleywilsonlaw.com 
And um, if you can't reach us, please leave a message and we'll get back in touch with you as soon as possible. Hope you're having a great day and uh, go Alabama.